Hey, welcome back to Las Vegas. The Cube is live at AWS reInvent 2021. I'm Lisa Martin. We have two live sets The Cube. We are running one of the largest hybrid tech events, most important events of the year with AWS and its massive ecosystem of partners. Like as I said, two live sets, two remote sets, over 100 guests on the program talking about the next generation of cloud innovation. I'm pleased to welcome a first timer to The Cube. Seth Rao, the CEO of First Eigen joins me. Seth, nice to have you on the program. Thank you, nice to be here. Talk to me about First Eigen, also explain to me the name. So First Eigen is a startup company based out of Chicago. The name Eigen is a German word, it's a mathematical term. It comes from eigenvectors and eigenvalues, which is used in what is called as principal component analysis, which is used to detect anomalies, which is related to what we do. So we look for errors in data, and hence our name, First Eigen. Got it, that's excellent. So talk to me, you know, one of the things that, that has been a resounding theme of this year's reInvent is that, especially in today's age, every company needs to be a data company. Yeah. It's all one thing to say that it's a whole other thing to be able to put that into practice with, with reliable data, with trustworthy data. Talk to me about some of the challenges that you help customers solve, because if some of the kind of the theme about not just being a data company, but if you're not a data company, you're probably not going to be around much longer. Yeah, absolutely. So what we have seen across the board, across all verticals, the customers we work with, is data governance teams and data management teams are constantly firefighting to find errors in data and fix it. So what we have done is we have created the software DataBuck that autonomously looks at every data set and it'll discover errors that are hidden to the human eye. They're hard to find out, hard to detect. Our machine learning algorithms figure out those errors before those errors impact the business. In the usual way things are sorted out, things are done, uh, it's very laborious, time consuming and expensive. You have taken a process that takes man years or even man months and compressed it to a few hours. So dramatic time savings there. Absolutely. So that was, so six years ago you, when you guys were founded, you realized this gap in the market, that it's taking way too long, we don't have this amount of time. Gosh, can you imagine if you guys weren't around the last 22 months, when certainly time was of the essence? Absolutely, yeah. Six years ago when we founded the company, my, my co-founder, who's also the CTO, he has extensive experience in validating data and data quality. And uh, my own background and my own experience is in AI and ML. And what we saw was that people were spending an enormous amount of time, and yet, errors were getting down through to the business side, and at that point it comes back and people are still firefighting. So it was a waste of time, waste of money, waste of effort. Right, but also there's, there's the potential for brand damage, brand reputation, if, if you're, you know, whatever products and services you're producing, if your employees don't have the right data, if there's errors there, if what's going out to the consumers is wrong, then you've got a big problem. Absolutely, interesting you should mention that because uh, over the summer, um, there was a Danish bank, a very uh, big name Danish bank, that had to send apology letters to its customers because they overcharged them on the mortgage because the data in the back end had some errors in it and they didn't realize it, it was inadvertent, but somebody ultimately caught it and did the right thing. Absolutely correct. If the data is incorrect, and then you're doing analytics, or you're doing reporting, or you're sending people a bill that they need to pay, it better be very accurate. Otherwise, it's a serious brand damage, it has legal implications, and it has a whole bunch of other issues as well. It does, and those things can snowball very quickly. Yeah. So, so, talk to me about, you know, one of the things that we've seen in, in the recent um, months and years is this explosion of data. And then in, when the pandemic struck, we had this scattering of people and data sources. There's so much data. The edge is persistent. We've got this work from anywhere environment. What are some of the risks for organizations? What, they come to you saying, help us ensure that our data is, is trustworthy. I mean, that, that trust is key, but how, how do you help organizations that are in somewhat of flux figure out how to solve that problem? Yep. So you're absolutely correct. That is an explosion of data, number one. And along with that, there is also an explosion of analytical tools to mine the data. So as a consequence, there is a big growth. It's exponential growth of microservices, how people are consuming that data. 
Now, in the old world, when there were few consumers of data, it was a lot easier to validate the data. You had few people who were the gatekeepers or the data stewards. But with an explosion of data consumers within a company, you have to take a completely different approach. You cannot now have people manually looking and creating rules to validate data. So there has to be a change in the process. You start validating the data. As soon as the data comes into your system, you start validating if the data is reliable at point zero. Okay. And then it goes downstream. And every stage the data hops, there is a chance that data can get corrupted. And these are called as systems risks because there are multiple systems and data comes from multiple systems onto the cloud, errors creep in. So you validate the data from the beginning all the way to the end, and the kinds of checks you do also increase in complexity as the data is going downstream. You don't want to boil the ocean up front, you want to do the essential checks. Is my, you know, is my water drinkable at this point? Right? I'm not trying to cook as soon as it comes out of the tap. Is, is it drinkable? Right. Good enough quality. If not, then we go back to the source and say, guys, send me better quality data. So, sequence, the right process, and check every step along the way. How much uh, of a cultural shift is First Eigen helping to facilitate within organizations that now don't, there isn't time to, you know, like we talked about, if, if, if an error gets in, there's so many downstream effects that can happen, but, but, but how do you help organizations, like, where, shift their mindset, because that's a hard thing to change. Fantastic point. In fact, what we see is the mindset change is the biggest uh, wall for companies to have good data. People have been living in the old world where there is a team, that is a group, much downstream, that is responsible for accurate data. But the volume of data, the complexity of data has gone up so much that that team cannot handle it anymore. It's just beyond their scope. It's not fair for us to expect them to save the world. So the mind shift has to come from an organization leadership that says, guys, the data engineers who are upfront, who are getting the data into the organization, who are taking care of the data assets, have to start thinking of trustable data. Because if they start doing it, everything downstream becomes easy. Otherwise, it's much, much more complex for these guys, and that's what we do. We, our tool provides autonomous solution to monitor the data. It comes out with a data trust score. With zero human input, our software will be able to validate the data and give an objective trust score. Right now, it's a popularity contest. People are saying, they vote, yeah, I think I like this, I like this, and I like that. That's okay, maybe it's acceptable, but the reason they do it is because there is no way to objectively say if the data is trustable. If there is a small error somewhere, it's a needle in the haystack. Yep. It's hard to find out, but we can. With machine learning algorithms, our software can detect the errors, the minutest errors, and it'll give an objective score from a zero to 100. Trust or no trust. So along with the mindset, now they have the tool to implement that mindset, and we can make it happen. Talk to me about some of the things that you've seen in the last, from a data governance perspective, as we've seen you know, the explosion, the edge, people working from anywhere, this hybrid environment that we're going to be in for quite some time. Yeah. From a data governance perspective, and, and data sovereignty, data residency, we're seeing so many more things pop up, you know, different regulations. How do you help facilitate data governance for organizations as the data volume is just going to continue to proliferate? Absolutely correct. So, data governance, so we are a key component of data governance and data quality and data trustworthiness, reliability is a key component of it. And one of the central, uh, one of the central pillars of data governance is the data catalog. Just like a catalog in a library, it's cataloging every data asset. But right now, the catalogs, which are the mainstay, are not as good as they can be. The key information that is missing is, I know where my data is, but what I don't know is how good is my data? How usable is it? If I'm using it for an account receivable or an account payable, for example, the data better be very, very accurate. So, what our software will do is it'll help data governance by linking with any data governance tool 
and giving an important component, which is data quality, reliability, trustability score, which is objective to every data asset. So imagine I open the catalog, I see where my book is in the library, I also know if there are pages missing in the book, is the book readable? So it's not good enough to know that I have a book somewhere, but it's, how good is it? Right. You know, so data buck will make that happen. So when customers come to you, how do you help them start? Because obviously the data, the volume is so good, it's, it's, it's intimidating. Yep. How do you, where do they start? Great. Um, this is, a, a, interestingly enough, a challenge that every customer has. Right. Everybody is ambitious enough to say, no, I want to make the change. But your previous point was, if you want to do such a big change, it's an organizational change management problem. For you. So the way we recommend customers is start with a small problem. Get some early victories, and this software is very easy. Just bring it in, automate a small part, you know, you have your sales data or transactional data, operational data, take a small portion of it, automate it. Get reliable data, get good analytics, get the results, and start expanding to other places. Trying to do everything at one time, it's just too much inertia, organizations don't move, you don't get anywhere, data initiatives will fail. Right, so, so you're helping customers identify where are those quick wins? Yes. And where are the landmines that we need to be able to find out where they are so yep. we can navigate around them? Yeah. We have enough experience, over 20 years of working with different customers, and uh, you know, if something can go wrong, we know where it'll go wrong, and we can help them steer them away from the landmines and take them to areas where they'll get quick wins, because we want the customer to win. We want them to go back and say, look, because of this, we were able to do better analytics, we were able to do better reporting, and so on and so forth. We can help them navigate this area. Do you have a favorite example, customer example, that you think really articulates that value there that we're helping customers, we can't boil the ocean, like you said, it doesn't make any sense, but customer that you helped with kind of like small quick wins that really just opened up the opportunity and unlocked the value of trustable data? Absolutely. Uh, so we are working with a Fortune 50 company in the US and uh, it's a manufacturing company. Um, their CFO, is a little you know, concerned whether the data that she is reporting to the Wall Street is acceptable, does it have any errors, and ultimately she's signing off on it. So, uh, she had a large team in the technology side that was supporting her, and they were doing their best. But in spite of that, she was a, she's a very sharp woman. She was able to look and find errors, and saying, something does not look right here, guys, go back and check. Then it goes back to the IT team and they go, oh yeah, actually, you know, there was an error. Some errors had slipped through. So they brought us in and we were able to automate that process. What they could do, they could do a few checks within their audit window. We were able to do an enormous number of checks more, more detailed, more accurate, and we were able to reduce the number of errors that were slipping through by over 98%. So, absolutely, really fast, really good. Now, now that this has gone through, they feel a lot more comfortable. Then the question is, okay, in addition to financial reporting, can I use it to iron out my supply chain data? Because they have thousands of vendors, they have hundreds of distributors, they have products all over the globe. Now, they want to validate all that data. Because even if your data is off you know, one or 2%, if you're a 100 plus billion dollar company, it has an enormous impact on your balance sheet and your income statement. Absolutely, yep. So, we are slowly expanding as soon as, you know, they love us, they like us, now they're taking it to other areas from beyond finance. Well, it sounds like you have not only great technology, Seth, but a great plan for getting, helping customers with those quick wins and then kind of landing and expanding within and really developing that trusted relationship between First Eigen and your customers. Thank you so much for joining me on the program today, introducing the company, what you guys are doing. Really cool stuff, I appreciate your time. Thank you very much. All Pleasure right. To be here. For Seth Brow, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching theCUBE, the global leader in live tech coverage.